Go on, ask me about Advanced Warfare. I dare you. Yeah, it's been out for a couple of days already. No, I don't have any weapon guides for you. I do have some Advanced Warfare gameplay for you in the background. These are my very first multiplayer games. I want to make that clear. This is the gameplay of a man who knows not what he does. I don't know the maps. I don't know the guns. I don't know anything. Uh, so this is quite naive. I do okay. My first game isn't spectacular. My second, third games are a little stronger. Because thankfully, everyone else playing the game has the same handicap as me. Nobody really knows what they're doing. So, yeah, I've been playing a bit of Advanced Warfare. I've been trying to get good at it, trying to get familiar with the game. It might take another week or two. But in the meantime, I have another project to finish, which I'm hoping to start uploading within the week. Actually, right now, I am sitting on a couple of finished videos, like actually finished, ready to go. But I'm kind of doing uh, a five-part special, and I'm releasing each of the parts sequentially, day by day. Monday through Friday, I'm thinking. So there's a bit of work left to do yet. So I'm hoping to finish four parts by Monday, then I'll start uploading, and the fifth part will be finished during the week. And all of the people who are already squawking for Advanced Warfare content will be absolutely incensed to the fact that I'm uploading something which isn't Advanced Warfare. But nuts to them. I'm doing some Advanced Warfare content next, you ingrates. Oh man, I've started off on a salty note. I don't want another salty bonus. Let's try and be nice. Let's be happy. Let's be pleasant. Okay, let's go. Adul Adul says, Hype for Super Smash Bros. for Wii U. Which is your favourite amongst the Super Smash Bros. series, and general thoughts on Nintendo? Nintendo? Pretty swell. I kind of wish they'd come up with new game ideas from time to time, but you know, hey, Mario's cool. Super Smash Bros. is not a series I am hugely invested in. Uh, I, I don't think I've... well, I've played them, but I've never really seriously played them. However, I have seen a lot of excitement for the new Super Smash Bros. on well, the internet, so I'm kind of excited on, on your behalf. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, I might pick it up at some point, and I might, you know, try and get into it. Model Omega says, can you say hooray for that? No, no, I can't say that out of context. Billy Lech says, hello, I have a question that is on my mind for too long, so I'm going to ask it. Are you left or right-handed or both? I am predominantly right-handed, although I do wear my watch on my right wrist. Uh, but I don't really tend to wear a watch anymore, so that's not really an issue. Cozy125 says, Thoughts on American biscuits, the fluffy, flowery type you find at breakfast, not our interpretation of biscuits. Ah yes, the American breakfast scone. Um, yeah, I haven't actually tried one. But I'm sure they're lovely. I mean, maybe not as nice as a real biscuit, but, you know. Well done, America, well done. Aidan McIntosh Johnson says, Swords, axes, maces, or other... I'm a fan of the classic, you know? Uh, I think there's a certain simple beauty to be had in swords. You know, no real nonsense behind them, they're just a length of sharpened steel. You can use them like a, a cutting implement, you can also use them like a blunt implement. Basically, you just swing them in your opponent's direction and after enough swings they, they crumple up and die. Unless, you know, you do it first. MI2 Lethal says, Hey Stu, can you say the following words? Vitamin, aluminium, schedule, Privacy, garage, water, advertisement, beta, tomato, renaissance. Um, I think so. I think they were all the British pronunciations. So how would the Americans say it? Vitamin, aluminum, schedule, privacy, garage, water, advertisement, beta, tomato, Renaissance. I don't know. How, do the Americans say Renaissance differently? I'm not actually sure. Maybe I've been saying Renaissance the American way all this time. Who knows? Zach Welsh says, Stu, what is your opinion on the pedestrianisation of Norwich City Centre? I don't think I had an opinion on it until you asked me. I don't think I've even been to Norwich. I'm sure it's lovely. So, pedestrianisation. In theory, I'm not particularly averse to it. I think it's quite nice to be able to walk down a shopping street without getting run over by cars. I think they're doing something similar in Preston, actually, at the minute. I was there a few weeks ago for a dentist appointment, and uh, around the station, they uh, I don't know what they're doing, but they're, they're making a mess. And apparently they're, they're pedestrianising everything. So, there you go, that's something that Norwich and Preston both have in common. That Mr. Sun guy says, uh, after your little bonus talk about sex and video games, would you perhaps make it a topic for your Brief History Of series? 
I, for one, find it interesting to observe the censorship and vulgarity strategies video game developers use when it comes to things we as humans are uncomfortable talking about. You've done a documentary on gore, why not try a documentary on the depictions of the other side of video game maturity? Here's a fun fact, the, uh, the gore video actually arose out of a slightly wider concept, uh, which I called Vice. Kind of stemmed from this concept of doing a video each on sex, drugs, rock and roll, that sort of thing. The sleazier side of gaming, uh, you know, the more controversial side of gaming. So the depiction of alcohol, the depiction of drugs, the depiction of sex, and the depiction of violence. These are all potential topics. But instead of doing it as its own series, I decided to adapt it for the brief history format. Which I, I think the gore video is actually pretty good. So as far as the others, um... Alcohol and drugs. This is definitely a potential. There are some interesting traits of these depictions in video games. Like, you know, you drink alcohol in a video game and they make the screen blurry. <laughs> you know, it's everywhere, all the time, it's every the same. One drink, oh, oh, I feel like my vision has gone blurry. And there's kind of a, a long history of games using drunkenness as a game mechanic. So I think that could be quite interesting. Drugs slightly different. I think my favourite example of drug use in video games has to be in the Fallout 3 DLC, Point Lookout. I don't want to spoil anything, but at a certain point in that DLC, you get drugged, and uh, the way that things are depicted is fantastic. I actually really like that. But yeah, you've got a few examples of, of drugs in video games. Uh, I mean, you know, from Pac-Man, like the power pill. <laughs> to stuff like Max Payne, you know, uh, you've got, what's the drug called? Valkyrie, or Valkyrie, or something like that. And, uh, you know, Max is obviously addicted to pain pills and all that, so yeah. Yeah, I think there's interesting topics both for alcohol and drugs. But the sex issue... I think sex is, uh, again, it's an equally interesting topic. However, covering it on YouTube would be challenging. Because a lot of games that involve sex, certainly those that involve the explicit depiction of sex, are quite controversial. And honestly, I don't think I could get away using footage of them on YouTube. I, I don't think I could. So there are some practical concerns with that one. Um, you know, basically censorship. So maybe I could um, exclusively release it on DVD, you know, distribute it myself. Maybe have a heavily cut version on YouTube and then, you know, for the real hardcore stuff. Simply call this number, have your credit card ready. But I don't know, I don't know. Um, <laughs> It's a risky venture, I think. But I do think it's an interesting topic, and it might be something I tackle in the future. Spritzy Thornbury says, I hope you go through with the year roundup type video. A quick question about it, though. How long do you reckon it will be? You say that it would be a documentary style video. I could see it reaching an hour or so with all of the video game related stuff that has happened this year. Um, as for runtime, I'm not actually 100% sure. A project like this, I'm happy to keep freeform. So that is to say, I'll. I'll plan the script, I'll, you know, decide what I want to talk about, and then I'll just fill in the sections and see how long it turns out to be. If I was to give you an estimate, I'd say maybe it's going to be at least 10 minutes, and I don't want to go over 20 minutes. So maybe 12 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, maybe 18 minutes. It's, <laughs> it's quite a big ballpark, but around that length. I don't think I'd want to go up to an hour for a, for a video, certainly not a scripted video like this one will be. Because an hour of scripted content, that's, that's pretty much feature length, and it would take me a very long time. And even if I were to produce an hour of, of scripted content, I'd probably split it into different parts. Two reasons, principally. Uh, one is to increase search engine visibility, just to give it more surface area. And two is to artificially inflate my view counts. You know, it's just an ego thing, and a money thing, I guess, as well. George Horchich, or Hawkick, I don't know how you pronounce that surname, says, Stu, are you planning on getting the Battlefield Hardline? Uh, maybe, maybe. I don't really see any major plans for me with multiplayer on that game. But it looks like they're investing in the single-player campaign, and more importantly, uh, for Iconic Arms, it might have some interesting weapons. So I will see how it reviews, and if it reviews well, then I might pick it up, and if not, then, well, I might pick it up cheap. Mr. Beastrus says, Stu, will you ever cover Halo? Hey, you know, the Master Chief Collection's coming out next week, isn't it? So, well, you can expect a bonus with that in. But here's what I was thinking, you see. Uh, because of the release of the Master Chief Collection, I always think it'd be quite nice to slip in a retro hoy for the original Halo Combat Evolved. 
The only trouble with that is, of course, I've got advanced warfare content to do, and all of these people, they want me to do advanced warfare. But I was thinking, you know what, nods to them, I might just do it anyway. So it's a possibility. It's a possibility. I am going to do advanced warfare content, and I'm going to do it after a brief history of graphics, which is up next. But I'm thinking to myself, well, I don't want to be a Call of Duty channel anymore, so I should probably keep a healthy mix of other stuff in as well. So I'm in no rush, you know, I'm in no rush here. I'm just meandering through producing stuff. So I'll do advanced warfare, but along the way, if I happen to do a, a retro high episode on Halo, then so be it, you know, keeps my channel interesting. Standard Gamer 720p says, I'm surprised no one has asked this yet. Do you think Oster Pistorius' jail sentence is too generous for what it is? And is there a point of sentencing celebrities if they can escape the sentence time? Ah, yes. The Oscar Pistorius trial. It's moments like this when everyone goes on Facebook to declare how much more just than the justice system that they are. All of the conjecture, you know, that he should have got more jail time, he's a, he's a murderer. And maybe that's true, but he has gone through due process, he has gone through a trial, and his sentence has been given, and that must be afforded a certain degree of respect. Is it a lenient sentence? It probably is, but it's a sentence nonetheless. So I dislike seeing this sort of rhetoric on, on Facebook. Justice does not work on mob rule, it is an ounce of civility, and a world that dishes out hate by the pound. Justice has been served, and you might find the portion insufficient, but it's justice nonetheless. The Stampede 66 says, What do you think about the size of games now? I haven't even filled up a quarter of my shelf, and already have 400 gigabytes taken away on my PlayStation 4. It is pretty ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, games, they used to be like, you know, DVD-sized, quite comfortably, you know? 8 gigabytes, and I mean, that's fine. That's 50 full-size games on a 400 gigabyte allotment of hard disk. But for some reason, with the advent of Blu-ray, developers have suddenly thought to themselves, Oh look! We've got 50 gigabytes of space now! Let's make our games 50 gigabytes! And so if you're lucky, you can get 8 games on your typical 500 gigabyte hard drive. Which rustles my jimmies, because uh, obviously with some of the series I do, I like to keep games installed. Like for Iconic Arms, I need Battlefield 4 installed, I need Ghosts installed, I need Advanced Warfare installed. And the problem's only going to get worse as time goes on. So I actually finally caved and I bought an external hard drive. I got a 3 terabyte drive. And so now that's plugged into my Xbox One and everything's, everything's hunky-dory for now. Because I got to the point where my hard disk was full. It's a case of one out, one in. It's like, sorry, Assassin's Creed 4, you're out. Sorry, Watch Dogs, you're gone. So now at least I have a little bit more breathing room, and also a slight performance increase, because I think um, it's a 72k RPM drive, and it's also not the system drive, which means there's no fighting between the game's loading and the system loading. So anyway, for me, the problem has been uh, postponed, but I, I imagine in a year or two from now, when I've filled up 3.5 terabytes, I'll have need for a larger hard drive. Primey says, Stu! Funny you should mention YouTube and 60 frames per second. Apparently, they are now slowly activating, I think. There's 60 frames per second videos popping up, and currently it takes long to process it in 60 frames per second, so it will be 30 frames per second at the start for a while, and then 60 frames per second will be available. 60 frames per second. <laughs> Indeed. Fortuitous timing. Uh, yeah, 60 frames per second now has been rolled out. And uh, the production I'm working on at the minute won't be rendered at 60 frames per second, just because... A lot of the stuff I've recorded at has been 30 frames per second, so it doesn't really seem worth it. But any advanced warfare content that I produce will be 60 frames per second. I will design the series around that. It will be double the render times and double the file sizes, but gosh darn it, it's worth it for that super silky smooth frame rate. Simon Davies says, Hi Stuart, I've asked this a couple of times before, but I appreciate you can't answer every comment. Is there any chance you could do a video, or part of a video, about what the different ammo types are through guns in history, i.e. what makes a parabellum round a parabellum round, etc, etc. A video on cartridges? Uh, maybe, maybe. I don't know what the angle would be on that, though. I suppose an overarching history would work, but that's slightly detached from the realm of video games. I suppose I could always talk about, you know, the relationship between calibre of the real-life weapon and the corresponding power of its uh, in-game depiction, maybe. It's food for thought. Um, it maybe lacks a little bit of an edge, though. But every idea can be hatched if you incubate it long enough. 
Vergash says, have you played Civilization Beyond Earth yet? If so, what do you think of it? I've been enjoying every second of it. I have, yes. I've actually, I, I played one full game of it, which, well, that took me pretty much an entire day. And I enjoyed my time with it, I did. I didn't have much of an idea of what I was doing the first time through, but, you know, I was playing on the easiest difficulty setting, so it was fine. And I do look forward to playing again. I think the general consensus on it is that it kind of needs a little bit more work, like it needs DLCs and expansions to pad out and, and chamfer off some of the shortcomings. But, you know, I figure that any game that I can spend all day playing and still enjoy is a pretty good game in my book. So it's not perfect by any means, but it's enjoyable. Shiwani GT says, Hey Stu, you made a good point. With the fact that YouTube is the biggest online video service and the fact that some YouTubers, like yourself, strive to make the highest quality videos possible but are limited to 30 frames per second, you would think that they would support 60 frames per second now. In my opinion, remove ads, add bitrate. Wait, what? Remove ads? I don't think so. I need ads to live. If I didn't have ads, I wouldn't be able to eke out a substandard income. AST5515 says, Sorry for politics, but what do you think about Hungary's internet tax? Being Hungarian, I hate it. I hate it too. I mean, the internet is its kind of one of the, the default means of communication. It's like imposing a conversation tax. And I don't know what the situation's like in, in Hungary, but I mean, here we pay... We pay sales tax, we pay VAT on our ISP bills, which is 20%. 20% of what we pay for our internet goes to the government. What, you want more than 20%, mate? Get out of here. So yes, I hate it, and I'm not even Hungarian. Although, I could eat. Spinosaurus Kin says, Opinion on Anita Sarkeesian. Tropes versus women in video games. Let's talk about that. I have a fundamental disagreement with the premise of that series. It's not presented explicitly, but the uh, the implicit premise is that there are not enough women in video games because the depiction of women in video games is skewed, it's misogynistic. That the sexist tropes within video games act as a barrier for women who want to play games. I don't think that's the major obstacle to women in gaming. The major oppositionary force here, I think, is largely self-selection. Women don't want to play games because they view games as something for children, something for nerdy men. It's seen as a male pursuit, and that is the single biggest turnoff for women. So every time gamers are painted as, as basement-dwelling neckbeards, I think you drive away people who don't want to identify with that. But the truth about gamers is that we are a more diverse lot than we're generally given credit for. I'm not going to pretend that there aren't misogynists within the gaming community. I'm not going to pretend, you know, that there aren't racists within the gaming community. There are, and they should be condemned. But by painting the rest of gamers with the same stereotypes, it kind of puts us in a bad light, and it doesn't really provide a role model for young girls who want to play games. And that's what they need. They need a role model. So while I can see the value of doing cultural analysis of video games, I think that while they do have some flaws, video games are okay. They're no worse than films, they're no worse than any form of entertainment. There are plenty of sexist films out there. I mean, just look at any action film, of course, it's a male power fantasy. Just look at any romance film, it's, it's always a, a woman striving to get a man, because that's how a woman is valued. So, the problems with sexism are not related to video games, they're related to our society. There may be a specific issue amongst gamers with toxicity, but that's a separate issue entirely. So back to the root point, I don't think it's the sexism in video games that is the problem. I think it's a lack of female role models in gaming that is the core component of this imbalance. If you want to fix this, you need to have more visible females playing games. Not doing cultural analysis, but actually just playing games and having fun and enjoying them. So I would say, Twitch streamers, YouTubers of the female variety. These are fantastic role models. These are visible women playing games and having fun. That is going to encourage women to play video games far more than trying to tear them down for being sexist. What do I think about Anita Sarkeesian? I think her premise is dead wrong. And finally to wrap up, Prototype Gore Machine says, You get paid to sit on your ass playing video games. I wouldn't be such a snarky fudge about it. 
Well, technically I get paid to drive ad revenue. And even then there's more to it than just sitting down and playing video games. And you know that, and I know that. So don't you get salty with me, mate. You know what you're welcome to do if you don't like it. Jog on. Alright, that's enough salt. Let's wrap this one up then. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, farewell.